Welcome to another in our series of InterGraph CAD Works and Analysis Solutions videos featuring Caesar 2. This presentation focuses on the ease and benefit of adding FEA results to piping and pressure vessel designs. We'll be discussing the why and when a more advanced or more applicable solution is needed. We'll see that one of the ways to get a more advanced or more applicable solution is by using FEA tools. There are certain well-known situations in piping and pressure vessel design where analysis techniques can provide both non-conservative or wildly over-conservative results. We don't want non-conservative solutions to jeopardize safety, and we don't want wildly over-conservative results to jeopardize cost or schedule. Production pipe stress and pressure vessel design are usually schedule-sensitive activities. Delays and changes can be expensive. Whatever we do analysis-wise, it needs to be easy, fast, and fit into our already existing workflow. We don't want to say that a line is overstressed and needs to be rerouted if it isn't. We don't want to add loops if they aren't needed. We don't want to build $50,000 supports for pumps that aren't required. We don't want a high cycle system to leak and we, we don't want to show that the stress is eight times higher than it really is. So in this presentation, we're going to look at these types of common situations in piping and pressure vessel design where there are known issues. We're going to look at examples where more applicable analysis, like FEA tools, can produce a much more realistic solution. Just because a piping system doesn't fail doesn't mean it's safe. Being safe in an industrial plant environment generally means having a code intended safety factor. When we talk about well-known situations and limitations, we can look at some warnings that are given to us by the B31 code itself. Note 1 in Appendix D and B31-3 tells us that SIFs and flexibility factors are valid for D over T ratios less than or equal to 100. Finite element results are not limited by D over T values of 100. Note 1 in Appendix D and B31-3 also tells us that the SIF and flexibility factors in Appendix D are for use in the absence of more directly applicable data. Since the equations in Appendix D were written, there are publicly available documents like WRC 329 and New Reg 5358 that contain more applicable data for SIFs. There's ASME Section 3 NB 3200 and EPRI 110996 that contain more applicable data for K factors. There is clearly more applicable data available since the time that the code rules were developed. And so the question is, when is this data more applicable and when should it be used? These are the questions that we'd like to try to answer in this presentation. Note 11 states that when the D over D ratio is between 0.5 and 1, the I factors may be non-conservative for pads, unreinforced fabricated T's and OLEDs, and that the selection of the appropriate SIF is the designer's responsibility. Just for information, here are the D over T ratios for most schedules of pipe up to 42 inches. You'll note that there are not many combinations of diameter and wall thickness where the D over T ratio is greater than 100. So the D over T limit in B313 Appendix D is not really a problem in most cases. The B313 code Appendix D Note 11 is based on work done in the 1970s by R.W. Schneider. Schneider conducted a number of fatigue tests on the type of machine that's still operating in the PRG offices today. So let's take a quick look at the collection of all of the out-of-plane intersection fatigue test data that's available for piping components. This chart shows the publicly available branch out-of-plane fatigue test data released between 1935 and about 2010 for branch connections where the T over T ratio is 1 or less than 1. We can see that there are only two tested geometries for unreinforced fabricated T's in the D over T geometry range between 80 and 100. These two tests are only for D over D values less than or equal to 0.5. There's only one fabricated T test in the D over T range between 40 and 100 for D over D intersections greater than 0.6. There's just not a lot of data in the high D over T range for any component. Let's look at this same set of data for geometries where the T over T ratio is greater than 1. 
There is no Markle type fatigue data in this range. What we're seeing is a developing trend. We can see that there's not a lot of data for large D over T. And so when the D over T ratio is greater than about 50, and the D over D ratio is greater than about 0.5, this is generally where we need to be careful. Since we're talking about test data, let's take a quick look at how Pollen Research Group validates solutions in area where there's not a lot of fatigue test data. The rig on the left is the type of test machine that R.W. Schneider and Markle ran. It's also the machine that Dr. Kahn ran for WRC 329 in Oklahoma in the early 1980s. The rig on the right shows a picture of the first recorded fatigue tests for piping. These tests were run by Blair in England between 1935 and 1945. The machine on the left again is in the PRG facility and is functioning in Houston today. We use it to run a variety of tests to support software development and to expand results into critical D over T areas. These specimens are in the PRG lab now waiting to be tested. Many of these are being run because all of the original Markle load deflection data was errantly discarded when Markle's company changed hands. Markle's SIF data was recorded in his famous papers, but all the load deflection test or stiffness data from Markle's tests was lost. The tests shown here include unreinforced T's, welding T's, and OLETs from WFI. These tests are intended to support K-factor results that are available now in ASMES TLLC 0702. Here's another specimen sitting in the PRG shop now that's about to be mounted under the Markle machine. This is a low carbon steel unreinforced T with a D over T ratio of 91. You can see where this T fits into the test matrix we looked at earlier. This will be the only out of plane Markle test run in this parameter range. Piping and vessel designs have both primary and secondary requirements. Primary failure or sustained failure mechanisms are collapse, excessive displacement, and burst. Secondary failure mechanisms are ratcheting and fatigue. Thank you for sharing your time with us. For Caesar 2 news, success stories, and free webinars, please Google Caesar Insider Blog.